Hi everyone, Josie here, Life at 50 and Beyond. Thanks for joining me here on my channel. Today I'm going to do something different. I am going to be showing you a compilation of some of my wall or over the door DIY Dollar Tree organizers. Because I constantly receive messages or emails requesting for organizers for the wall or over the door. So I figured probably make it easier and compile it and let me know in the description box below if you want to see more of this type of videos so sit back and relax and enjoy this video for our first project we will be using one shower caddy i got this at dollar tree also a couple of this rectangular slotted trays or basket contact paper empty toilet paper rolls we need four of them a wooden dowel also a cardboard command strip we will be using to fit our small ribbon so we're going to be creating a ribbon dispenser just insert each of the ribbon through the slots we have 15 slots on this one and it just fits my ribbon here and then I'm just going to be inserting my dowel and that's my dispenser. The second one I will be using one of the trays to hold some of my craft items and this one will be holding my twines that I use for crafting and voila that's it. Next we're going to be using this cardboard. Any card stock will do but I'm reusing a packaging material uh, from an old sticker and then I'm just going to be measuring and trying to fit this four empty rolls of toilet paper and then I'm going to be marking some outline and I'm going to be cutting it just try to make sure that they all fit then using my scissors cutting it I'll be covering it with contact paper. I have some scraps that I used and they're from Dollar Tree as well, but you can use any decorative paper. I'm rolling my contact paper around the empty roll and then measuring it to size. Just cut them in equal sizes, so you need four. What I like about the contact paper, it already has some built-in adhesive you don't need to use glue and then I just wrap them around each of my empty rolls of toilet paper then once I'm done I'm gonna be trimming any excess paper and then I am just gonna be gluing them onto the cardboard piece that I cut earlier first since I have enough contact paper left I'm gonna be covering this cardboard Once done, I am going to be adhering or attaching these rolls onto the cardboard. I am using my hot glue. You can use any strong type of adhesive that will hold well. For me, my hot glue is enough. Make sure that when you position each roll, you position them where the seam is either toward the back or next to each other, so at least the back is clean too. And I'm just going to repeat all of this for all four rolls so that I make sure that they all are sticking onto the cardboard. I want to make sure that they also are snug next to each other. You can also apply glue in between each one so that they stick together or you can put an adhesive tape on the top to just to hold on each one connected. Now I'm ready to assemble. I place my command strip on the door. You can do this also on your wall and make sure that it's sticking well and then put your shower caddy. Next I am going to be inserting my ribbon dispenser using the hooks, the two hooks at the bottom of the shower caddy. And then my other tray with the twines, I'm going to put it on one of the shelves. I'm not going to be attaching it with any zip tie. I just want it 
like this so that I can pull it out. And then I'm placing the rolls of toilet paper that I wrapped earlier and I'm going to use it to hold some of my crafting essentials like my box cutter, my scissors, my pencils, colored pencils or anything that can fit in. For the next project, I am going to be creating an extension for the caddy, but you can use it as a standalone, meaning you can hang this on the wall or over the door using some hooks on its own. So I'm going to be using two sink mats that I got at Dollar Tree, and then I'm going to be connecting the two with zip ties. So I'm just going to put three zip ties. be connecting my first basket. This comes three in a pack. I will be using six of them and I'm just going to connect each one starting at the bottom using my zip ties. Then here I'm just going to show you where I'm going to be positioning them making sure that they have equal spaces. The reason why I attach the one at the bottom first so that I will have enough room for my hand to be able to connect all of them. If you start at the top, it can be done, but it's easier when you start at the bottom. Then I just have to make sure that I put zip ties. You have to put at least three to make sure that it's not wobbly and it is more durable. Now since this is a light item, I'm using it for washies, I didn't need to. I just hooked up the top of my sink mat and then I put it underneath my ribbon dispenser and then that's it. Voila! The beauty of these DIYs, you can use them independent of each other but also you can expand them so you can either add on the left or on the right side of the sink mat to expand it. I use this to hold my washies. There are approximately 150 plus washies here and I kind of separated them by style in each of the trays or what I can call now shelves. And I can separate them by theme or color. You can use this to organize just about anything. If you want to use this for all your crafting needs, more ribbons if you like, threads, if you like to sew, but you can also use this to organize your makeup, your nail polishes. Now the next project is kind of similar too because I'm using a shower caddy, but this is another take on a shower caddy organization. So in this project you're going to be needing one shower caddy, three place mats made of fabric, a pair of scissors, glue gun, and hot glue sticks as well as this pencil pouch, a basket as long as it fits. You can also use the other basket from earlier that'll fit perfectly. Another command strip box cutter. Now I'm just going to be removing the tags or the labels and I'm going to be creating three pouches here to hold some of the items that you can organize. So this is going to be for a nursery or a baby's room or toddler's room and this is perfect if you're homeschooling your kids and you want them to learn how to organize their school supplies and maybe art supplies. So I folded this to create a pouch leaving at least two and a half inches or three inches on the top and then I applied hot glue and folded it and made sure it's flattened because I needed the space on the top so that I can insert or place some of the items that I need to organize. I'm also applying hot glue on the top portion and then I'm going to connect it to the bottom part of the other pouch. You can also use Velcro or fabric fasteners, Dollar Tree sells those hoop and loop uh, fabric fasteners also or fabric glue or fusible 
webs, you can use those as well, they sell them at Joann's. And also use your sewing machine if you have one and if you can sew just go ahead and sew them together so that they'll be more durable but for me I've used hot glue to connect them and I'm just making sure that the connection is secured I also dab more glue on the corner and then here I'm just testing this for size now I'm gonna go ahead and puncture a couple of holes on the top portion so that there will be a place where I can insert those two hooks that are at the bottom of the shower caddy because that's how I'm gonna hang it so I'm just marking it with my pen and then I am going to be using my exacto or my box knife and just creating a slit and then I'm puncturing it with a sharp pointed scissors You can also use some fasteners or grommets to reinforce the holes but right now I'm just using it like this one. You can actually lock it down with hot glue if you want to make sure that it doesn't rip apart. Now the section 2 of this one is where I could put probably crayons for the kids, coloring pencils, and this pencil pouch it can be used to hold erasers or extra pencils and whatever the kids will need these are multi-functional organizers so it's not only for kids this will be good for any age okay now to reinforce it further and as you've seen I use the command strip there on the top to hang it but you can also reinforce it with additional command strips on some of the corners of that shower caddy. Now I'm just going to show you how I organize this, putting some colored paper, coloring books, as you can see here I'm also putting in the pencil pouch on top of the top pouch and this is where I'm going to be putting this basket or tray that they can either remove or keep it there if you want to tie it with zip ties on each side so that it's not going to fall off and then they can just reach for their things so there are more spaces at the top I would put the heavier one on the shower caddy just because it is not going to sag and like the cloth or the placemats. You can put the lighter ones on the bottom and the heavier ones on the top. And if you're a homeschooling parent, imagine this in your homeschooling area. For the next DIY, I am going to be using this pencil holders. Three of them. And I'm also using or reusing my twist ties. You can also use the smaller zip ties if you like but I just want to use also anything that can be destined to the trash and here as you could see I'm also using a cooling rack that they sell for two for the price of a dollar at Dollar Tree so here I'm just inserting my twist tie and then I'm going to be applying hot glue at the center or in between those two ends of the zip ties and then that's where I am going to be connecting to the cooling rack. Now as you can see here, I already placed this pencil or pen holder and then I'm twisting my twist tie. The reason for me putting the twist tie here is so that it will hold it in place. So it also adds stability. I'm adding E6000, any strong bond glue will work as well because over time if I'm going to put something heavy like pencils and any heavy item, the hot glue may not work. 
so it's not as strong hold as an E6000 or Gorilla Glue or Super Glue. I'm using it and I dab it on top of the twist eye I'm putting at the bottom part and then later I'm going to put on the top portion and then I'm going to even add some more hot glue even though I already have E6000 because hot glue dries faster. So I'm just going to show you the back portion here. If you notice I am putting the connections at the back and I'm using the portion of the pencil or pen holder that has the seam so that it'll show much better in the front that there are no seams at the front. Just going to repeat the same steps that I did with the middle one. Now for this other one, I'm going to be using this letter organizer and I'm going to be creating a hanging filing system using the second piece of cooling rack. Glue it at the center bottom part so that I have a place to hang files or notebooks, anything that it can hold. After applying hot glue and place it in the right position, I added E6000 for more stability and stronger hold. And here are the two finished projects and my daughter loves them. She uses them to organize her pencils and pens, even the calculator and her folder as well as notebook. I made this over a couple years ago and it's still hanging strong and she's still enjoying using them in her industrial style study area bedroom. Now for the next DIY I'll be using two pieces of framed artwork that you could get at Dollar Tree. Now I want this lemon style. It's good for the kitchen area because I made this actually for our command center. So I have included it here on the wall organizer collection because it also is an organizer. It keeps me or my family organized with our schedules and appointments or whatever events because that's where we're going to be hanging the invitations and notes as well as a good place to organize or hang photos. So I'm going to be using also this wired waste basket as well as this wire cutter. Actually later on as I'm cutting this, although the wire cutter is doing great, I discovered that my pair of scissors from Dollar Tree is doing a better job and it's actually cutting better and I'm going to be showing that to you in a bit here. So I removed the top and bottom portion of this waste basket and then right at the seam I'm cutting it at that portion all the way through so that I can expand it because I am creating a message board where I can use some clothes pins or hooks to hang things like notes and greeting cards as well as invitations. Now I'm cutting it in half after folding it to size and then I am going to be measuring it again and trimming it and here's where I'm using my Dollar Tree scissors. Since then I've been using the Dollar Tree scissors and then because again it does a better job than my wire cutter. Now I'm just using the fastener from the frame to fasten the wires and then trimming the excess that's protruding or showing up on the side. And then I'm going to be reinforcing it with hot glue. Anything that I feel that there's not enough uh, fastener to hold it in place, I just apply hot glue. 
and then now I'm going to be aligning it. Originally I was going to do this vertically, but I figured this print can work also horizontally, and I prefer it that way anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect the two using my hot glue, and you can use E6000 or any stronger bond glue. Put it in between those two frames, connect them together, and then I'm using a popsicle stick, applying hot glue to it to reinforce the connection because either it will get wobbly and it can break or snap, so this one will give additional strength or reinforcement. Then this is the handle of the wired basket, which I'm going to be using below this, by the way, but I use this handle so that I can also hang it on top because I want to give this a farmhouse feel so instead of wasting the handle of one of my wired basket I just use it here and then that will be where I'm going to be hanging and here's the finished project I love this cute camera clothes pins and I got that at Michael's actually they're so cute and you can put photos here your invitations or notes or memos and you just clip them or hang them there and then on top on this frame I am going to use a dry erase marker and then just use this to write reminders or memos to the family put also a ribbon to the middle part where I connected the two frames and just so that I could give it a better finish and to make it pretty I put some fake flowers or silk flowers from Dollar Tree I put a bow on top as well to cover the hanging nail that I put there and then I just hung the handle on it and here's the portion of that basket I used that portion where the handle was and I hang it on the wall and that's where I'm going to put my dry erase pen as well as my eraser. So this will work well in your home office. Next wall organizer, another revamp of that caddy earlier and then sort of a pegboard style organizer. I'm using a shower caddy and then just attaching this clipboard that I got at Dollar Tree and then I'm connecting four of this medium size wire baskets using zip ties and then I'm just going to be connecting them like creating a big square or a rectangle and then that's where I'm going to be hanging on the wall and that's where I'm going to be putting my scissors and my other sharp items. So this is how it looks like. I just placed some slotted trays, baskets on the shelves of the caddy. I placed also contact paper, kind of like a wallpaper so that it's a backdrop just to put some more depth and interest in that corner so that it's not boring. It's like a demarcation for this wall organizer. Nice. And then that clipboard there, you can put some messages to, like for example, any project that's due. And those square or rectangular slotted baskets that I used that I got also at Dollar Tree, where I can use it to put my twines, my threads, and my ribbons. And on the top here, of course, I love this. It's kind of like a pegboard and to protect or organize my scissors and any cutter, wire cutter, as well as my hole punchers that will fit there and even my magnifying glass and my awl that I use for my crafting. For my next DIY, speaking of pegboard, I'll be creating the one at the middle or center of that photo and I'm going to be using this grill pan and it already has some holes so it's perfect for a pegboard and I'm going to be painting this with an acrylic paint. I'm just going to thin it with some water using my crafters paint brush or artist paint brush I'm just going to be applying paint in one direction adding paint as I go because I'm trying to give it like a whitewash look it doesn't have to be a perfect one I want it to look like a little bit wettered so that it's going to be in the farmhouse style and I'm using this furniture scratch marker this 
dark brown here I got it also at Dollar Tree and I am going to be painting or applying it onto the sides just to give it additional depth and then once I'm done I'm gonna be gluing some nautical rope or jute and then just apply hot glue to connect them kind of framing it and like I said this is gonna be in farmhouse style so to add that would give it a bit more of a farmhouse or rustic look and then I'm gonna be cutting the end here using dowels that also came from Dollar Tree they come 15 in a pack you can also use the metal garden hooks that they sell at the garden section at the Dollar Tree they come two in a pack so I'm just gonna measure this using my ruler cutting it at the center and then using my, my scissors I will cut this at the center and then I will have some pegs. And voila! And then I am going to be inserting them in some locations. I am going to be applying thick hot glue so that the hot glue will be acting like a stopper since the dowel is not that wide it may get yanked off or fall through the hole so that's why I applied thick amount of glue then you can reinforce this with E6000 as well just to keep it intact so I'm just gonna go ahead and insert the dowel with the glue into the hole before the glue dries up and I'm doing it from the bottom or the back of the pan because if you do it from the top then it will take off the glue so this is how it should look like so just leave it like that for a bit let it dry and then you will have a peg and I am stacking up the wooden utensils that I also got at Dollar Tree and it's the perfect length so it's strong enough to hold two or three or probably even four because it's long now I'm gonna put one more at the center and then probably another one at the very end so that I can hang a couple more items and just to repeat the procedure again so you can see how I'm doing this just holding it until it dries and then I'm applying the third dowel aka peg now I am going to be adding some more jute first I'm going to be tying a knot on each side so that I can add a little bit more of a decoration here and then I'm gonna be hot gluing each knot on the corners on the front and that'll be where I'm gonna be hanging from this will be somewhere that can hold it so apply a generous amount of glue so that it doesn't get yanked off easily or again add E6000 for a more stronger hold so here it is it's done and let me just show you you can add real or full plants that you want to kind of like air dry so I'm using this full plant that looks so real that I also got a Dollar Tree and then I'm hanging it on one of the pegs so it'll make it look like I am air drying some real plants so again you can use real plants if you want to so I just tied some twine here and then hang it on the center peg so you can use three plants but I decided to use the wooden utensils 
just to make it more like a kitchen decor that I can hang in my kitchen. So I added some more twine to decorate it so that it will be a little bit more farmhouse rustic look. So you may think this is more like a decor rather than an organizer but to me this is also a wall organizer because you can actually put threads there, put more pegs, put different types of threads and you can put it in your sewing room or your craft room. You can put different types of ribbons in each peg and those two items on each side I've DIY'd that. If you're interested click on the upper right hand corner I card and you can watch how I made those two decorations as well. And for my next DIY, this actually was like a gift wrapping station that I created probably a year and a half ago. And I'm just using this pot lid organizer or plate rack that I got at Dollar Tree and I use this to hang my gift wrapping paper, the rolls of gift wrapping paper. and so that I can see them and they're in the station where I will wrap gifts. So below it, I hung some of my gift bags as well. So just to give you an idea, if you have the wall space, use it and you can hang this and this is just a dollar. Now I also created this kind of a wrapping paper dispenser or roller and I was just using those two hooks that I also got at Dollar Tree. I think they came in a set of six or eight for a dollar and this is just kind of like to uh, kind of dispense the gift wrapping paper and I was just using a plastic desk or table to cut the gifts and I love this deep basket plastic basket that they sell at Dollar Tree and this is where I put some of the ribbons the loose ribbons that I will tie the gifts and also this blank cards and greeting cards or even the labels or gift cards and I used command hooks again one on each corner to hang it and they sell those at Dollar Tree believe it or not and here's another cameo of this caddy that you've seen at the very beginning of this DIY and look I connected those fabric placemats to hold some of my gift wrapping essentials this time like for example gift wrapping tissue papers or gift boxes and other extras that you can use for gift wrapping and I like that this has withstood the test of time and I only used hot glue here's that ribbon dispenser from the first portion of this collective DIY and this time because the hook is used I used it on one of the shelves and this is just a pull-out dispenser. This is how they look like together. Now for the next DIY. This is one of my favorite projects because it's so durable. It doesn't sag. So I used this two shelf riser that they sell at the kitchen aisle and also four of this organizer baskets that are wired and these are the other items I'm using. I am counting the position where I'm going to be inserting one of the legs from the bottom and as you could see I counted the sixth slot from the bottom of this riser here and then I inserted one of the legs of the other shelf underneath it or through it. <laughs> and I'm going to be connecting this with zip ties. I'm putting them close to where the legs are overlapping. I'm tightening them up and then I'm going to be trimming the excess. Now my tip here is you probably would do better so that it won't slide down do a crisscross pattern on your zip ties so that they will hold better and the riser will not slide down. And I didn't do that here because this was my first try but reading or watching it now and learning through experience 
I think it's much better, better to do it that way. It's still good because what I've done here is I reinforce it with glue so it won't slide down, but I think the crisscross and winding this several times would make it more durable. Now I'm adding first the first or the bottom shelf. Positioned this upwards like this, the way it will look like on the wall so that I can connect it or balance it better. You could probably connect it on its side or while it's lying down, but I think this is a better way. It's a little struggle for the first shelf because the first shelf is the one that's going to make it stand up while I work on it, but as I move on to the top, it's much easier. So as you could see, four more zip ties here. I connected to the legs of the riser and then and now I'm going to be applying the second shelf making sure the first and the second are aligned and then adding zip ties again to the same location that I did on the first one. I'm going to do the same thing again on the third shelf as well as the fourth shelf. Now the beauty of this organizer is that you can expand this you can add more to the top or if you want to do this like a standalone or a desktop organizer, you can do a kind of double up, meaning like this one, I have two risers and four wired baskets. You can do another one and then connect them back to back so that it will stand. So this is the finished project, total $6. And I I'm loving this like I said this is very durable I put my heavy stuff my acrylic paints even my sprays and other things there make sure that you hang it on a wall using two heavy-duty nails you know you can use just the carpenter nails you can't see them anyway next one I'm gonna be using this two cooling racks they come in a pack of two for a dollar and then this office organizers the wired one I love this one you can get them at Dollar Tree then some zip ties hot glue and reinforce them with E6000 first I'm gonna be aligning or putting the lower portion where the feet are for the lower portion of one of the cooling racks to the top feet of the other cooling rack and I'm just gonna be tying a zip tie where they overlap so you could see the positioning here, like I said, I lined up the two lower feet of the cooling rack on the top to the two upper feet of the cooling rack that I placed underneath it. And then tied zip ties at the center. So you can be liberal with your zip ties here, depending on how you want it to be as durable as you like. You can add more definitely more is better and then as you've seen earlier I reinforced it with hot glue so that it doesn't move or slide side to side I was just reinforcing it with hot glue so that it stays in place then I trim the excess and you don't have to worry too much about how it looks like again because it will be hidden underneath or behind the trays that I'm going to be using as shelves. I'm going to be connecting this or each shelf or tray with zip ties. So make sure that at least it's centered. It's covering all the other zip ties you connected earlier. And as you could see here, I made sure first that I place my first tray, which will be my probably the third shelf first okay because that will be my starting point because I just want to make sure that I have even spaces in between the trays or the shelves again be liberal with this make sure that you apply as much zip ties or hot glue that you would like to make it really durable because in this case we're going to use it to organize my daughter's makeup and they can be heavy and I didn't want this to slide down 
or get yanked off or to sag so that's why I did it this way I'm going to be placing my very bottom shelf and then I'm just trying to see where they're going to be positioned because I want to make sure like I said earlier that they have equal amount of space in between them so that it will look nicer so it's up to you if you want to put taller items you probably wouldn't want to put too much trays so in my case I'm just putting four trays you can limit it to three trays if you want so for me four trays is just the perfect one for the items i'm going to be organizing here now i'm doing this i've aligned the very bottom shelf to the very bottom portion of the cooling rack and this will be in fast motion and self-explanatory up until i connect the very last basket or tray and here it is again I'm just using the door you can again hang it over the door using that dollar tree over the door hanger hook or you can use command strip as well but I think this one is more durable now for the next DIY I love this one because this was a request from our friend who was living in a dorm and she wanted something that she can remove the shelves so I'm using this Dollar Tree removable hooks to accomplish that so with this rectangular slotted basket tray as well as those smaller trays that come three in a pack so this actually is a total of four dollars because those hooks are also a dollar so I'm just going to be putting this here and if you want it more permanent if you don't want to remove the baskets because again this is a special request to be removable so this is what I thought about but you can also zip ties the two ends of each basket to the side so that it is just going to be a permanent shelf but if you want to remove it if you want the ability to be able to take it off and then put it back on and which what she wanted because she wants this hanging on the wall and then when she's using something for example she needed this for her craft items so if she needed some of her tools or pens she can just remove whatever shelf that she needs and then what I like about this one there will be enough space at the bottom where I'm going to be hanging some washies so this is it I'm using some of the stamp pads because that's what she wanted this for one is for her small stamp pads and then because she's doing some planner thing because she's seen also my planner videos and she said she wanted to do more planning in college and of course she will be using washies to decorate them so just a dowel again and then I just put this washies and the fun part here the bonus part is that those slats became the cutter so it's amazing because washi is so thin you can cut it through just about anything now as you could see as a stopper so that the dowel will not slide from each side I just use the binder clip on each side and to hang to the wall I'm just using a piece of this thick ribbon which is a burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree 
hot glued each end and then I'm using it to hang on the hook here, command hook, that you can also get, like I said earlier, at the Dollar Tree. So this time it's at the, on top of the door or on the door, but she will be hanging it on the wall above her desk. I also want to mention that instead of the binder clip, you could probably use either, you know, somebody suggested maybe a hair tie. And then if you're replacing the washi, you can just remove it or a zip tie would work and then just cut it. It's inexpensive anyway. Now for the next DIY, I'm going to be showing you an alternative to the plate rack slash pot lid organizer because for quite some time, Dollar Tree didn't sell them. They're back again as of this date. But before, you know, people would say, oh, I want that uh, gift wrapping paper organizer, but they ran out of those. They couldn't find it. So I came up with this idea to shower caddy, and then I inverted one, and then I connected them together like so. And then, of course, using my zip ties, I connected them where they kind of intersect and to make them durable. Now I adjusted this so that the rolls will fit and then the middle portion because not all gift wrapping rolls are cre created equal so the thicker or the bigger ones will stay at the center and I will show it to you later on. So this is just how I'm going to be connecting them. Started at the center so that it will not slide off while I'm connecting them so it makes it a little bit more secure and easier to connect the other connections. After 14 cable ties or zip ties later, I'm applying hot glue after cutting the excess onto each of the connection to give it a little bit more stability so that it will not slide off. And here it is. What I've done here is I used binder clip or even clothespins to use a stopper so that they don't roll down. Because unlike the plate rack or the pot lid holder, it has some kind of area there that kind of holds it because it has some kind of bend. This one doesn't have it, so that's why I use binder's clip, and it works. And the bottom hooks here, I use them to hang my gift bags. That's it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed these compilation videos and you were able to get some ideas on how you can build your own organizers using inexpensive materials coming from the Dollar Tree. I will be linking in the description box below all the URLs or links to the videos, the full length videos if you are interested and I will do my best in also putting all the materials used in the description box below. If you have any questions do not hesitate to ask me in the comments section and let me know again if you are interested in more compilation videos and I hope you all are having a great day. I will talk to you again on my next video. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.